everybody, Dr. Rick back at you. Uh, look, I am going to try to bring a point home that I think is so desperately needed in our community. Look, for the people who believe in the work we do at The Black Voice, at the Odyssey Project and all of its uh, subsidiaries and subcategories uh, and platforms, the work I've done for more than 30 years, the research, the program development, program implementation. If you follow me, you're aware of it. Some of you have benefited uh, from the work that we do, advocacy for the incarcerated, uh, a recidivism program, so much more. Uh, currently working with law enforcement to try to bridge some gaps and create some policy changes, which is never easy and you understand that, but uh, somebody has to be engaged. But anyway, if you believe in that, look in the description box, show your love, show your support. I want to talk about something. I'm real big on accountability. Uh, I have written extensively on the uh, mechanisms and machinations of institutional racism in this country. I have gone to great depths to chronicle uh, the linear path of racism and its impact on blacks over the last what 400 years from uh, 400 plus years uh, from 1619 moving forward I have done that and there is no argument in the area of institutional racism and uh, and how it has negatively impacted blacks in so many areas socioeconomically uh, socially and community and in academics uh, career wealth so many different places that's there can I deny that but what we do need to be able to do and i think we are doing a terrible job of that now and that is being accountable to ourselves for the things we control well you can become so uh engrossed in uh an element or component of a problem in your life that the problem grows or the problem becomes more powerful than it really is that it becomes more uh influential in your life than it really actually has the power to be because you've given it power by focusing on it. See, if you're focusing on the problem, you cannot focus on the solution. So the ideal approach to dealing with racism is to look at for look at problem solving mechanisms to overcome the very uh, institutional machinations and mechanisms at play. Here's here here's where I want to talk about and focus on now. Uh, whether uh, first of all, well, let's start with this premise. For the most part, everybody wants to be rich to a certain point. There are some people who are on this spiritual journey and uh, are saying, you know, and in their mind, they don't want to be rich. And when I say rich, I'm not talking about a certain amount of exorbitant money. I'm talking about having enough money to where money is no longer an issue in your life. And the, the lifestyle you live will depend upon, will de uh, determine what rich is for you. Your lifestyle will determine what wealth is for you. And wealth and rich is, are not the same. And I'm not going to get into a great detail, uh, distinct, uh, de defining the distinction of the difference, but they are different. But either way, your lifestyle is going to determine what rich means to you for a person who's living off the land, living in a secluded area, eating from the land, uh, not caught up in all of the consumerism and commercialism of life, their rich is going to be different. Uh, a, a lot of currency in the bank account is not going to be something that's attractive to them because they have no need for it. Um, for a person who is moving around and operating within the throes of life, you're going to need money in order to survive. You need money to pay bills. You need money to eat, especially if you're talking about eating healthy, all of these different things. And then if you want to really truly enjoy life, you want to travel, uh, you want to live in a certain area with fewer, fewer security challenges and a safer environment, all of this stuff costs. So at some level, everybody wants to be rich to a certain point. And that was a point in time that whether you came for money or not, you were taught a couple of things that were primary. Uh, some of it misguided, but some of it very important. Number one is you had to work hard. You had to find something of value, find something that you were good at doing that provided a service and do it well and people would pay you. Now, sometimes that meant being paid well on a job, but the best way to do that is to be paid well as your own business owner because you control your destiny plus you own the business, meaning that you can project that lineage from a 
uh, lineage perspective down uh, your progenital line. So your progeny will benefit from the wealth you're building now because you're able to pass that down. Uh, I do segments on uh, money and wealth building on Mondays and Wednesdays consistently. It gets very little peep from the people that are watch, that are probably going to watch this, but it gets a lot of attention from people who don't look like me. Go figure. But anyway, here's the thing. When we were growing up, you knew you had to work. That was a certain focus on work ethic. That was a certain drive on doing something. And not just doing it, but doing it well. Doing it so well and so exceptionally that it brought you the things that you wanted. Some of us did it well enough to get some things. Some of us did it well enough to get a lot of things. Some of us took the world by storm. But we all done it through a base of wealth ethic work ethic. What we have done is we have failed our children because we had so many different issues with the way we were reared that we wanted to get as far away from the way we were reared as possible. And we took, we left the trash, but we also left the valuable uh, things that came with it. We left the abuse. A lot of us don't put our hands on our kids. Uh, a lot of us don't sit up and talk down to our kids. But we also left the push to be hard workers. We have created a sense of entitlement. Our children don't want to work for anything. So then they grow, they grow up from being children who don't want to work for anything, who believe they should get an allowance, who believe that just because they exist, they should have anything they want. And they grow up to be adults who think the exact same way. So what happens is now we have social media. So everything's a scheme and a hustle now. Everything is, I'm gonna hustle this, I'm gonna hustle this, not work hard, not develop a level of expertise in anything. I'm gonna work hard, I'm gonna hit this, I'm gonna hit this. So everybody's basically stabbing in the dark and the things they do, men are trying to get hustle on some kind of money tip. Everybody's going after the hot stuff. The Forex is just blowing up and raking people like crazy because I've been dealing with the Forex for over 20 years. 20, well, almost 20 years, something like that. Uh, and so I know how it works. I know what's going on. And, it, and it's a good place to dabble. It's a good place to play. It's not where you want to put all of your hard-earned effort and money. Too much volatility in currency pairings. Too much volatility in currency, currency fluctuation. Too much data reading and too many things that can cause uh, fluctuation and momentum. You can get in it. You can make money. I'm not trying to take that from anybody who's making a living off of it. I have a couple of boys who are doing very well in it. But most people are trying to get in it and not going to put in the time, energy, and effort that my boys have put in it. Or that I put in it when I wanted to play with it early in. I called it play because it was not going to be my primary source of income. It was going to represent a very small portion of my income. And I still know 50 times more than the average person that's out there trying to hustle that darn gone Forex. Uh, everybody's trying to do Bitcoin and crypto. Crypto and Bitcoin... Bitcoin has definitely produced some 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 wealth and some riches. Uh, the time to really get in on it left. I don't know what's going to happen in the uh, near future or what's going to look like 15, 20 years from now. I chose to get more involved in uh, blockchain technology, which is how Bitcoin was created. Uh, there's four more diverse uh, maneuvering, maneuvering and movement with that. Uh, and everything, but that's that. Our women, uh, they are choosing to take the Instagram influencer, Instagram model, and I'm not just talking about young. There are some 50-year-olds out there that have unbelievable, beautiful presentations, but they're using their presentation to make money. And the thing is, one thing I say this all the time to my sisters, and when I say sisters, I mean black women. I say this all the time, look, Great, you got a banging body. Great, you look great. But let me tell you something. Black, beautiful black women come a dime a dozen. So you're out there competing with all these other black women, trying to get enough followers so that you can uh, be considered an influencer and that you can make money. Most of them out there aren't making the money that the few that are getting on are. And everybody, whether it's blockchain tech, whether it's Bitcoin, or whether it's um, Instagram models, it's all about, am I going to go viral? Am I going to uh, be lucky enough to hit uh, hit the right button at the right time and win at this thing? 
And the truth of the matter is that's not how you get on in life. This isn't about luck. This is about hard work. This is about preparation. This is about growing. This is about developing. This is about putting it in. I have shared so much information in the area of revenue generation and building online revenue streams. I have done it consistently. I share it in all of that. But here's the thing. It requires you put on the beautiful thing about it is what most people are sitting up there hoping to get a viral video, hoping for people to click the like button, hoping for people to click the share button. And no, because I'm not taking the superficial route, I'm not going to have 2 million followers because the stuff I'm talking about has substance. What I'm going to have is a longevity because the quality of what I deliver is real. So I won't get the hoopla and all of that. I won't get the flash in the pan. Every now and then something I do say or share, shares will go viral and I'll see a boost in subscriberships in some places, a boost in viewerships or a certain article will get a lot of attention and it'll generate a burst of revenue. But what I did is I just created so many streams of revenue that the sustained uh, substance that I produce creates this flow across channels across platforms and that the beautiful thing about it is you can do absolutely the same thing but you cannot do it by hoping wishing and expecting something extravagant or special to happen or hoping that you get lucky we've got to get off of that we've got to get back to teaching our children that hard work pays off that yes you do, do, do need to own your business. I'm real careful about conversations I have with people who I know because they're real quick to call my business is hustle. And do I grind? Yes. But hustle is normally associated with something that doesn't have a legitimacy, a level of legitimacy and validity. I pay taxes. I have a organized business structure. Uh, I have business bank accounts. I'm literally building and growing and working and doing things with clients that I've had for years. So it's not a hustle. It's a business. And this is the thing that you should be looking to do. You should be looking to build your own, become uh, uh, an influencer. Yes but an influencer that provides value. For my young sisters, how long do you think your body is going to pay you? And what do you have in other sense? Brothers, if you wanna stop chasing every little scam and thing out there or jumping on somebody else's uh, idea and throwing it out there and trying to make it seem like it's yours and all of this other stuff that that's going on there. Everybody's, build something that's solid, that's you. That when, when people say your name, they know what you're talking about. When people say your name, they say, this is the guy that talks about this. This is the guy that teaches this. This is the guy that can do this. This is the guy that if you want your car done, you know, a special customized suspension on your car. This guy is the best in the freaking uh, Eastern Hemisphere in getting it done, Western Hemisphere in getting it done, the Northern Hemisphere in getting it done, whatever. Uh, you know, the same thing. You can be the best at something if you put your mind to it. But everybody's trying to be a copy of somebody else or trying to jump on some fad or some trend, trying to go viral on something instead of sitting up and building something solid, putting in the hard work, you cannot circumvent the need for a, hard, uh, uh, a highly engaged work ethic. You cannot circumvent the need to be very, very astute in your area of operation. You cannot do it. You simply will not be able to. On that note, look, I'm gonna get ready, get ready uh, to get out of here, but I had to talk about that. We have robbed our kids. We have failed our kids because we have entitled them. We have given them all the things we didn't have, but they haven't had to earn a damn thing. They haven't had to put in the work. They haven't had to stand up. They haven't had to go in and work things out, figure things out. And if something were to happen to us, they would be in a very, very, very horrible situation because the world doesn't give a damn about them. The world isn't going to give them the breaks that we gave them. The world isn't going to fulfill their sense or their need of entitlement. The world is going to sit up and say, what do you got?
what are you giving what are you doing what do you have to offer and if they don't have anything to offer it's going to be hard for them to eat so i hope that you're leaving them something that will support that entitlement because if not it's going to be real hard and by the looks of where we are not many of us are leaving anything so on that note look i'm gonna get ready to get out of here i wish you the best i hope for you to have an unbelievable uh and an enjoyable day with your family on tomorrow I'm going to get out and relax. I don't even know what I'm doing tomorrow. But I'm going to get out now and relax a little bit with the guys. But I challenge you to do something uh, exceptional, remarkable. Become someone that is recognized for the level and the quality and the uh, excellence at which you do something. On that note, I'm out of here. You have a great day.